Hi, this is Jerry from Independence Live. Um, in this video, we look at how to broadcast your Skype conversation to Livestream.com. Um, just a few things you need. Um, you need a decent PC or Mac. You need uh, the Skype application and the Livestream producer application and accounts on both those services. Uh, you'll also need an internet connection with a decent upstream two megabits a second or thereabouts. So let's launch Livestream Producer and have a look at the settings. It remembers who you logged in as last time. And so you hit the eject button to log in with a different different name. Okay, so we're logged in and it gives you a list of the events available. Um, Can you create event from here? I don't think so. So you would have to go off and create an event um, on the live stream web page probably. Or you could do it on the live stream app. We'll go and use this one, Skype test. Um, good thing about um, going live, you can actually stop it from notifying followers. So it's quite good for testing. Right, I'll just uh, give a quick overview of the settings. Most of these you don't have to touch. Um, video, the important thing is to set your output resolution. So if you think um, we often uh, live stream you know, is essentially 360p, which is sort of, I think that's the height of the resolution. Um, so you could uh, go for that um, with changing this to 360 or try for a higher higher resolution um, 540 so we'll try 540 again um, so essentially it's going to try and output 960 by 540 so bear those numbers in mind because they they show you like a viewport um, with those with the resolution that you're actually capturing um, I don't really fiddle with the aspect ratio I'd leave it at widescreen um, there's a target bit rate there live stream is usually pretty uh, forgiving um, I've gone for 350 kilobits a second um, that's pretty typical for what we would achieve from a, um, a traditional live stream. Um, Keyframe intervals, I leave that as a default, haven't really fiddled with that. Um, you'll notice I've got um, my webcam, or the, the source set to no camera. I think by default it comes on and it picks up your webcam and puts that as the source, but set it to no camera. Audio, I don't fiddle with the, the defaults there as yet, um, but the the audio mixer is the important bit. Um, by default, it picks up your um, playback device, which is speakers usually. But if you want your microphone to be part of the live stream, you need to add it in here. And you need to know which which recording device it is. Um, I've got a USB webcam with a microphone and a, a, a de fairly decent microphone. I can't really see it in this light very well. There's a... Um, and you just have to uh, figure out which one's which. I think this is the uh, the decent microphone. Give it a tap. Yeah. Whereas if it was to tap the webcam, it's not really showing me much. Okay. So uh, for this test, we'll have my microphone enabled. Um, and desktop. Um, for our purposes, um, I've disabled the show mouse and highlight mouse sections. They're, they're usually set by default, and I think it's important 
because it's very distracting when you get this big yellow circle following your mouse about. The viewers at home don't really want to see your mouse. The less they're aware that they're watching a computer screen, the better. So show preview is fine because that's useful in the in the bottom left. Save video to file. Yeah, well that's sort of a good idea. However, let's face it, if we're doing Skype, if we lose our network connection, we're pretty screwed. We're neither seeing the people we're talking to nor uploading to the live stream. The rest of those things I leave alone. Okay, game and hotkeys never went near there. So to summarize the sentence, say click preferences, it's really only um, setting the resolution, the target bit rate, and making sure your audio sources are right. And turning off your mouse and highlight mouse. Um, so video, audio, desktop, there, there's only really a, a few things to sort and then you're ready to go. Let's launch Skype and get a conversation ready to broadcast. So at the minute I've got a big picture of Kevin on my screen and a little inset picture which isn't really um, the usual sort of state of affairs is it? And that's because we're only a two way. It becomes different when we're a three way. Uh, we'll try Mark and see if he's available. He might be busy but um, to get the screen the similar size that will happen on a three way. Alright, this is really just a technical um, exercise and now that I've got everybody if that's okay with you, I'm just going to do a test live stream to uh, to simulate what happens. Um, right, right, bye. So let's let's say we're ready to stream. Mark's leaving. Bye, Mark. We've had our little uh, preamble talk to all the guests. Everyone's happy and you're ready to go. So um, you bring up the live stream producer, which is sitting down on the taskbar, and you check that the event is correct and you just hit go live and then give it a name. Now the good thing with the live stream producer is it allows you to notify or not notify followers so when you're doing tests that's great I don't think you can really do that when you're testing via the live stream app so I'm going to not notify followers I've given it a name and I'll start and it takes a few seconds to start and then the, the important thing to notice are the green bars that are that are specifying the viewport. Um, it always tells you it can't do chat and get that out of the way. Right. You can see on the side of the bar it actually shows you the pixels in height and width. And before I started this, Kevin, I set up a resolution of 960 by 540. Um, so if if you can achieve that and I suppose that makes sense. Unfortunately at the start of the live stream the viewers will see a lot of fiddling about and every time you fiddle about it means that Skype is no longer on top and Skype throws a video on top of the person who's talking. The technique is to try and adjust your view at the beginning and then until you're happy with it and um, and then leave it as best you can. So I'm going to actually get rid of my camera and that changes things again, so I have to change the view, viewport again. So every time you change the viewport, remember to click on Skype um, so that it's on top. Yeah, I've, had to, I've had to make a small change, so um, otherwise you get all sorts of funny um, effects on top. Um, once you get your viewport nice, you sort of leave the mouse alone. And it, when, it, when you're hosting it, then mostly your job is to check that what's going out is right so I usually use my phone and just check that we are getting sound check the messages so down on the bottom part of the screen uh, live stream is showing me uh, a preview um, although there's no indication of how the sound is going there um, you get the most important thing which is sort of a status screen which shows you how long you've been streaming and yellow warnings most of the time um, if your CPU resources aren't quite coping. Uh, when it settles down to below, let's say, 80% CPU usage, uh, it'll say perfect streaming. Uh, 
Okay, so let's say um, there's a message I want to type. Um, this was uh, a bit tricky because I had um, I had the three people all lined up, lovely. Um, and when I typed a message, so you have to sort of hover over the Skype and find the find the thing, and it go. It, you've no idea where it's going to go. Um, yesterday, sometimes it went below. The pictures which is great because the you the you the viewers couldn't see it now when i've done it it's gone to the side which is no good because it looks messy do you follow me so are you talking about when you send the text messages skype, skype yes text type, so i'm like, going to i'm going to send you something here and you need to be able we need to encourage our uh participants to be able to see the the chat so they know what's yeah. happening and it means um, although there was a racket with me typing, um, I didn't have to mm -hmm. say anything. And I can also switch my microphone off, which I did towards the second half of the interview yesterday, so that they didn't hear my, my thunder, because to, they, they knew if they heard somebody typing, it was me putting a message up, which I suppose is a useful cue, but in a way, it's a bit distracting as well. Yeah, this is how I communicated all the questions to Mark, and he, he saw the chat screen immediately and he would lean forward and look at his screen and say, oh, the viewers are saying this. Yeah, what I'm experiencing now is that three people plus me was better than two people because the way that Skype fit, fitted everybody in worked nicely with the, the chat window. I put the chat window down low. Um, so I've just got you and Mark and that Right, but where where is me? Profile window. All right. Hmm. See, that's a bit more like what I had last night, which is good. It's about getting it's about getting that right. So now I've got it perfect, and I should just leave it uh, perfect for me, in that I've got my my chat window that I can type into without the viewers seeing. And um, and it's down below. So I've got I've got a, a sort of resolution of seven six six by three eight four. The video to be where we've got the, the participants in the conversation in the viewport for live stream, and I've got a, a Skype chat window down below, not affecting anybody. So um, I can type away. The participants can see the chat if we tell them to, and the live stream is is pretty stable. Right, I've told Skype to use the split window view. I've got rid of my contacts window. I've opened up the chat um, interface. If I close the chat interface, it'll spoil everything. And um, so I can basically run the broadcast with having the, the chat interface open. Can I ask you a que question, Jerry? Um, yep. When I, when I watched uh, you know, the, the interview with uh, Mark and uh, the two guys yesterday, I couldn't see you in any box, but were you part of the, the, the Skype conversation? Yeah, I was. I was part. So I had, I had no camera. I was like this, no camera. But the, I couldn't actually see you on screen. I couldn't even tell that you were there. We, you did. Yeah. You know, I can. That's I quite. Saw. That's quite neat, really. I mean, I know you can see a, a, a still picture of me now. Right. But my screen, which is the important one, I'm not on it. The Skype shows you your view, and it doesn't need to show you um, a picture of yourself if you've if you've uh, switched your camera off. So, like, say you were to switch your camera off, then you would see a different right, view what? of things. Ah, you just see oh, right. Mark's room, don't you? Yeah, I just see you. Oh, oh, you see, a, you see a still of me and Mark's live I video see. feed. Um, yeah. So, hello, guys. Yeah. So the hoster is, is actually hidden from the viewers, which is good. And to be fair to the people, um, um, I should, if you're, if you're purely hosting, you should probably mute your mic to the participants, except but, when you need to talk to them, which should be rare. But, you're ho but Jerry, you're hosting this and I can still see you. You can see me, but the viewers yeah. can't because they're seeing what I see and Skype doesn't show you a still image of yourself. If you want to set up an interview between two people and have a third person hosting it, what you do is um, you bring in the two people 
into a three-way conversation. The hoster then disables his or her camera and on the hosting person's PC you will just see a conversation between two people and that's what the viewers will see but the participants will see a still image of the hoster and the other participant so they'll see a three-way and if they have video running they'll see themselves in video if they don't have video running they will they won't see a still of themselves but from the viewers point of view they shouldn't really even be aware there's a third person there so yeah so you've got three people involved in a standard two-person conversation that's been broadcast and the third person is invisible and silent to the viewers and also can be well it, you can switch you can mute your mic so that there's no extraneous noises so like someone could phone my landline in the middle of all this and I don't want that distracting the conversation so I think it's good practice to mute the mic if you're being a silent broadcasting host. Um, so there's right. three people. There's an interviewer, an interviewee, and a silent broadcasting host. So the components you need are a relatively good PC or Mac. You need Skype and you need live stream producer. And that's all you need and I suppose the cleaner the PC the better so there's not a whole lot not a whole lot of other applications running all right I suppose what normally and I think we would end the live stream and then uh, be able to talk to the guests afterwards although sometimes the guests have to go or they misunderstand you're saying goodbye to them it's also it'll be interesting actually to see when it actually cuts off so um, I'm going to count one two three and keep counting on three I'm gonna hit stop just to see when it actually kills the live stream okay yeah. so goodbye you Kevin it's been great thank you very much okay bye Jerry it's been a pleasure thank you one two three four five six seven eight oh, it's, I thought we're, we're, we're clear now we're clear it says on the live stream producer it says shall we post the video and I don't care again it says you can notify followers or not notify followers so I'll untick that for this test, but I'll just pub pub publish it. So click post. So once that comes up, you're pretty sure you're not live anymore so that you can just talk as normal. As a postscript, we discovered that there's an important call setting within Skype um, to uncheck the show call controls when Skype is in the background. And that option is only available when you show advanced options. So on a PC, that means going to Tools, Options, Call Settings, Show Advanced Options, and then uncheck Show Call Controls when Skype is in the background. And that means that the irritating um, little video screen will not keep appearing every time you adjust the live stream producer viewport, um, as you will have seen in the video earlier. So that's quite an important setting to apply.